It's everybody's favorite video. Seven players let your idiot league mates draft the updated August edition. And we've got some zingers on the list today. I expect people to be very upset, very angry, very somber, a lot of melancholy chirping down in the comments section. I want it. I live for it. Let's go. Seven players let your idiot league mates draft. Tuck your shirts in. If you want to tuck this shirt in, it's available for purchase on bdge.shop. Nipples do not come with the shirt. If you enjoy the video, all we ask is that you subscribe to the channel and just follow us throughout the NFL season because we will be talking a lot of shit about Jonathan Taylor right now. And believe it or not, this this has nothing to do with the injury that he's dealing with right now. It has nothing to do with the contract situation. It has nothing to do with the trade request. Although if he does get traded, I kind of feel like the indie situation might be the worst situation for him right now. If he went somewhere else, I think he would probably move up my rankings. But those three things aside, because I don't actually think those things will matter when the regular season kicks off because I don't think he's going to be traded. I think he will be healthy, and I don't think the contract matters when it comes to week one of regular season. But actually, I will hit on that second point because there is this thing that I think we're going to see happen a lot to running backs where they're getting kind of like ridden into the ground, right, and then not getting these big contracts and secondary contracts. So you might see running backs maybe milk out injuries a little bit more. So a dude like Taylor or maybe like Josh Jacobs this year, you know, if he has like a low ankle sprain that normally he would play through and probably play well through, he might just sit out games in order to sustain long-term health. So I think while I'm not going to like be dramatic and, and say that that's a huge risk for him or that's a reason why I'm fading him, I do think that's a little bit of uh, salt on top of the steak here. When it comes to Jonathan Taylor, my main concern is this. like When you draft JT, you're drafting him as a very, very highly regarded fantasy option at the running back position. And if you're taking uh, a fantasy running back you know, as RB3 or 4 or even probably up to 5, you are doing it with the expectation that they have a real chance to finish as the RB1 or 2 overall on the year, right? Because the RB1 or 2 overall on the year is probably going to be borderline uh, a league-winning player, get you into the playoffs. Now, I've done pretty extensive research on the type of running backs that have league-winning seasons, and for the most part, what I do is look at the threshold of 20 fantasy points per game, right? If you're a, a running back that scores 20 fantasy points per game, half PPR, you are considered a league-winning running back to me. Over the course of the season, if you could do that, you're a fucking monster. You are a fiend for fantasy points. Now, in order to get there, you, you pretty much need one of three or four things. The overall volume actually does not need to be that high if you are an excellent pass catcher. Like we've seen a ton of uh, running backs have 220, 240, 260 carries, but they're catching 60, 70, 80 passes. That's obvious, right? Like that's how they'll get there as an elite fantasy option. Of the dudes that don't do that, of the dudes who are just great on the ground, like we've had years of Ezekiel Elliott, we've had the, the Adrian Petersons, we've had those types of guys, Derrick Henry's, and even Jonathan Taylor a few years ago. Those types of guys are the ones that can get it done without catching more than 35, 40 passes. The dudes that do that, though, however, need to be in usually in alignment of two things, a really good offensive line. Like all of those dudes who end up finishing as a top three, top two, top one fantasy running back, 20 points per game or more that don't do it via pass catching all finish with a top five run blocking unit. OK. And the Colts are not there anymore. They were for a very long time, and they still have some really good pieces in place, but they're not the elite offensive line that we thought was going to be built around Quentin Nelson. And it like got there for a minute and then kind of fell off, and they're not what they were anymore. They need that, and obviously they need a ton of touchdown upside. Now, Taylor could obviously score a ton of touchdowns, but even if he gets into like the 11-12 range, that's not going to get you to that 20 fantasy point per game mark. So... Um, I'm I'm just nervous about this whole indie offense. Now they're they're like going the right direction, like they're rebuilding correctly. However, I just think we're probably a year away from it still not being like an imploding offense overall. Taylor's not like uh, he'll catch passes if they're thrown his way, but this is not going to be an offense that is sustainable for running backs catching passes. Obviously, we need to talk about like Anthony Richardson here. If you go back to his time at Florida, like his best pass catching back last year caught nine balls for 66 yards. He targeted running backs on 5% of his throws in 2022 and scored 31% of Florida's rushing touchdown. He'll be great on the ground. Again, I think he'll average, you know, 4.5, 4.7, 5.0 yards per carry. I just question whether or not 
he can really hit the upside that you're looking for with a dude like Taylor. I think we're like a year away from really having elite Jonathan Taylor back again, and I don't know if I want to draft him as highly as he's going right now. He's not going to catch a ton of passes, and I do question the line and the upside of the offense overall. So Taylor's the first dude on this list, and we will continue down the haymaker list of DeAndre Hopkins. It should come as no surprise that going to Tennessee is not a great thing for a pass catcher because this is an offense that obviously runs through Derrick Henry. And I think when you look at like what A.J. Brown did there, right? If, if we're comping, what, what's the upside of DeAndre Hopkins? How could he's going so early still? He's still he's going in like the fourth round despite moving over to Tennessee. And I'm like, D Hop's like a late fifth, sixth round pick for me right now. Cause I don't think I, I think the upside, if you go look at his line on underdog right now, it's eight seventy five point five receiving yards and four and a half receiving touchdowns. Like he's still gonna be really good for them for their offense, but statistically, this just won't be his year. This is like a 31-year-old DeAndre Hopkins. And we look back at A.J. Brown. Remember how like held down A.J. Brown was in this Tennessee offense? And we're talking about prime 23, 24, 25-year-old A.J. Brown who could like top 1,000 yards on explosive plays, making 50, 60, 70-yard catches down the field and making shit happen after the catch. That's just not D-Hop's game anymore. And not to mention their offensive line stinks. If you go listen to Establish the Run's last podcast where they brought on Brandon Thorne, who's like an O-line specialist, he ranked Tennessee in their own tier as the 32nd ranked offensive line. So while, while I do think D-Hop has plenty left in the tank as like a real-life NFL receiver and his upside would 100% be there if he had landed with a good quarterback or in a high-powered offense or whatever. Traylon Burks, I still think he's going to have like a breakout year. I think he's going to show why he was a first-round pick to begin with this year. Again, maybe not statistically, but I, I think he will be more competition for targets to DeAndre Hopkins than most people are kind of giving him credit for, but the O-line stinks. They're still going to run through Derrick Henry. I'm, I'm just out on DeAndre Hopkins anywhere near his price. And let's move back to the Indianapolis Colts. As you can see, I am very, very much off this offense. And the reason is because we don't know what's going on at the quarterback situation, which makes me fade Anthony Richardson. Okay. I know this will be kind of a hot take. He's been one of the most polarizing players in fantasy football this offseason. Right now, if you go draft an underdog, he is like the QB 10 or 11, which is insane to me. And people are like really hanging on to this quote that that the Colts came out and said like two months ago that the best way for him to get experience is to just get into the game. Like I still don't think that means he's starting every game for the Colts this year. And the, and the biggest problem with this time of the year is just all of these highlights come out about training camp, right? And you see Anthony Richardson just throw it 60 yards with a little flick of the wrist, right? And it's beautiful. And we already knew he had that capability. And we know he's good on the ground. And we know he's athletic. And we know he has all of these things. But people only like to highlight the upside. But for every cool highlight video you see, every cool, like, Anthony Richardson was so sharp today, I will show you 10 of these tweets. Colts practice recap. Anthony Richardson struggles. Not a banner day from Anthony Richardson. Showed some flashes, but in inaccuracy showed up a little today. We said not every practice would be great for Anthony Richardson, and today he had his most inconsistent day yet. No reason to panic. Just life as a rookie in the NFL. My point. Colts practice ends with Anthony Richardson having one of his passes batted and intercepted. That about sums up AR's first padded practice. Struggled throughout. And this is a tweet from July. I don't really put a ton of credence into it just because like this is a ridiculous timeline for this just account to have. But Anthony Richardson will reportedly split first team reps with Gardner Minshew at training camp, which I believe Richardson is reportedly thought to take over the starting role by or before the Colts play in Germany week 10. The Colts reportedly believe Richardson is a long term solution here. And I have no, obviously you draft him that early. He is a long term solution. But if you guys are just hanging on the fact that they had this one quote two months ago that he is for sure the starter, no doubt about it, it's going to give you 17 games, you're crazy. He is really young. They need to develop him into an NFL quarterback. He has the traits to be a high upside guy, but drafting him where he's going right now in fantasy drafts feels crazy to me. And shout out to J-Mo in the office who ripped off this stat. He said, over the last three seasons, the quarterback 11 in fantasy football has finished with, on average, 295 fantasy points. During the Super Bowl era, only three quarterbacks have hit that mark. I'm just not there with him. The guys that are going around him, you have like Deshaun and Tua in front of him. I think you have like Kirk and Daniel Jones right behind him. Like, give me all of those dudes without a doubt before Anthony Richardson. All right, so we've got a couple Colts. We've got DeAndre Hopkins on this list. We've got his old teammate, Hollywood Brown, coming up next on the list. And I just want to throw it out there. Listen, we have our draft guide live right now. So if you just want to show up to your draft and have everything you need just in front of you on a nice little PDF with rankings, and you can 
fill your team out right there. I thought that was a cute little addition. We've got one quarterback. We've got super flex. We've got our all fade list. So all the dudes that we talk about in the videos that we absolutely hate and disgust us, they're in there written up for you and why we don't like them. Okay. So there's two ways to do it. There's one that's way cheaper than the other one. You can go get it on bdge.shop right now. It is live. It is available. You'll be able to download the PDF as soon as you purchase it, or you can go to underdog fantasy. And if it's your first time depositing, use code BDGE, throw down $10 or more on there. And not only are they going to double whatever you put down onto your account there. So you can do pick them games with it. You can do best ball drafts with us, but you'll get the draft guide emailed to you for free. And for anyone who signed up and didn't get the email yet, it should come within 30 minutes. But if not, please check your spam folder. It's probably sitting in there. And if still not, hit us up business at bdge.co and we will take care of you. But go to Underdog Fantasy, link down below, download the app, deposit 10 bucks. If you're a first time depositor with our code BDGE and get the draft guide absolutely free so we can continue to shit on Mr. Hollywood Brown. He is the wide receiver out there in Arizona. Now, listen, he is a clear wide receiver one in this offense, no doubt about it. But we have no idea what's going on with the quarterback position. Kyler Murray's not out there. Kyler Murray's not going to be starting the season for the Arizona Cardinals. He tore his ACL very, very late into the season. And this is a team that's not really playing for much. If anything, they are playing not to be good. Because they have their own pick, and then they have another pick. They're projected to be the first two picks in the NFL draft next year. You think they want to be really good and not get a Caleb Williams or or a move? They're, they're set up for a, a nice future. It's going to be a shitty, shitty near term, but they're going to have a lot of picks if they want to take a quarterback with the one and then move Kyler for multiple picks also on top of that. They might have like fucking four first-round picks next year. Shit is going to be fun in Arizona like three years from now. But right now, this year, you don't want to invest early capital, fantasy capital, into this offense. I want nothing to do with Hollywood. I really don't want anything to do with James Conner as much as like probably should because he, he just keeps proving that narrative wrong. The only guys I'm really investing into are easily double digit round guys. Trey McBride, Michael Wilson, like those are the dudes I'm looking to invest in this year. Marquise Brown, like I said, I, I don't expect Kyler to play a ton this year. I also, even if he does play like 10 games, 12 games, he's going to be like what makes Kyler so great is the fact that he uses his legs to a phenomenal degree and can make plays on the run and do all that. And that's what makes the Arizona Cardinals offense run. I, I just think there's no chance he's playing at 100% this year, even if he's on the field. And when we look back, like Marquise Brown had some really good games last year as the alpha. But when you actually split it up and look at the games he played with and without Kyler Murray, out of split on the right side are the games that Kyler Murray was not the starter, did not did not pass the ball more than five, five times in a game. His numbers were horrific. 5.3 half PPR fantasy points per game, 3.6 catches, didn't score a single touchdown, 35 receiving yards. Like there is a big difference here. And if we don't know who we're getting at quarterback, I want nothing to do with Hollywood Brown. I also want nothing to do with Kadarius Tony. We've kind of been telling you not to draft him for the last like month or two. At this point, you kind of got to be a fool. And I wrote this list up and he's been in our all fade list on our draft guide prior to the injury that he suffered at training camp. But now it makes it a little bit more obvious. Already out of training camp, going to miss some time with the knee issue. He He's just not, he, he's never going to be the alpha in Kansas City. He's just not built to be that guy. He's really fun and he could have some high upside games, but he's like a gadget. He's like a Debo Samuel Walmart version but he'll never get like the cat. Like, think about Debo Samuel's really, really high finish a couple of years ago. He had like eight or nine rushing touchdowns. That will never happen with Kadarius Tony. You take those out, and and what are you really getting here? When you go check out Matt Harmon's reception perception, which I will link down below, really, really good resource. Kadarius Tony in the fifth percentile versus man coverage, eleventh versus press coverage last year. Like followed it up with an equally abysmal performance, got even worse against zone. He's like a poor man's juju, actually. So tons of questions about Tony. Like, who even is he at the NFL level? He'll have like some fun plays, but where he was going at the seventh round or whatever. And, you know, I've been on record many times saying I would much rather have Sky Moore five to six rounds later. And now I think their ADPs will probably convulge a little bit, but stay away from single digit round Kadarius Tony for show. Number six on this list, Mr. Gabe Davis, wide receiver of the Buffalo Bills. I don't know. He's just not it to me. You know, going back to Matt Harmon's reception for seven, just who he is as a player. I get that he's like a nice downfield playmaker. Man coverage, 24th percentile separation. Zone coverage, 10th percentile. Press coverage, 20th percentile. He's just so hard to predict when to start in redraft leagues. It's like if you're in a deep league, you're starting like 11 players in your starting lineup. He's a cool like flex two or flex three guy to have. 
because everybody's flex two or flex three stinks and Davis will give you random games where he puts up like 25 points. But the problem is you got to grab him in like the seventh round right now. He is not your flex two or three. He's like your wide receiver two or three. And I won't hold his rookie year against him because he was a rookie. But over the last two years, when he's been like a full-time player and supposedly he's supposed to break out, He's played 30 games over the last two years. In 16 of those 30 games, he scored under six half PPR fantasy points. So more than half of his games, you're getting an absolute dud. Like, I'm not saying like he scored less than 10 fantasy points because nine fantasy points is like, okay, whatever. From my wide receiver three, I'll take that. Under six half PPR fantasy points. And I get it. He has those like boom weeks. But for whatever reason, those are like only in the playoffs. Over the last two years... In the regular season, when it's like the fantasy season, he has had four games over 15 points and two games over 20 points. Like he doesn't actually boom when it counts for fantasy players. He's been in the league for three years already, and he has yet to crack 50 catches or 850 yards over that time frame. Over the last three years, there have been 13 rookies by themselves, rookies that have gone over 850 yards and like countless, obviously, second and third year players that have done it. At some point, you got to stop making this like laundry list size of excuses for bad play and just you either get it done or you don't. So like Gabriel Davis, like maybe he's the Devontae Park where he has that big like 50-year breakout, but I, I just don't really see it. And they draft Dalton Kincaid in the very first round. Kincaid is going to be a problem for Davis's target count. Kincaid's going to be awesome for the Buffalo Bills. I'm just out on Davis unless it's like best ball and you can get him later in drafts. And the last player up on this list, which uh, kills me to put him on here. I'm so sorry, Kyle, but it's it's Kyle Pitts, man. It's Kyle Pitts. They're just run heavy. He can barely run right now. He's like limping around training camp. I'm just very, very much on the side that like Drake London is going to be the alpha as the pass catcher there in Atlanta. I I know we're like hanging on that thousand yard rookie season, but realistically he had about three, I think he had three fantasy games over like 12 points that year and they were against abysmal defenses. So I have no doubt the pitch is going to hit and he's going to be like the player that we keep projecting him to be. But you got to remember he came in the league so young. We're a year away from the Kyle Pitts show. We're a year away because we don't know what this offense is going to be. Desmond Ritter, he's not throwing the ball 35 times a game. They're going to run the offense through B. John Robinson. They're going to run the ball a lot. They have a great run-blocking offensive line. The pass volume just won't be there, and I think Drake London is going to be the guy that out-targets Kyle Pitts absolutely. And I'm not usually the dude that's like, I'd rather be one year late on a player than one year early. That's kind of like the opposite of the way I operate. But for Pitts, that that is the way I think I want to operate going forward. Like I said, you know, we all know he's going to get there, but I don't want to be the dude that's like continuously dipping my toe into the pool to see if it's it's getting warm, right? It's a cold pool. We turn the heater on. Those things take a long time. It takes a long time to heat up the entire pool. And the way I'm looking at Kyle Pitts right now is he's an Olympic-sized pool. So when it does finally heat up, it's going to be tremendous. You've never seen anything like it. But right now, I, there's still time left. There's still time left for Kyle Pitts to become the Olympic-sized pool that we all want to fucking cannonball into. All right? So that's the video for today. If you enjoyed, make sure you subscribe. Hit the button that looks like this. And most importantly, please go sign up on Underdog. It's the best way to support our brand and the most fun way for you to interact with us because we are doing streams and we are doing drafts and we are doing all that kind of stuff like throughout the week multiple times. So if you hop in the Discord, which is free, you can draft with us. But go to Underdog. Use promo code BDGE to sign up. They'll double whatever you put down on the platform, as well as getting our draft guide absolutely free. If you're in a state that doesn't have it, head over to BDGE.shop, and you'll be able to cop right there. I love you. See you tomorrow.